Welcome to the show that's about to change how you think about publicity and how the world sees you. Ever feel like you're just pouring money into ads and PR and not really getting noticed? Or maybe you just don't know where to start. Well, today is your lucky day because our guest, Shannon Procise, is with us. And she's the go-to expert on snagging incredible media attention without spending a dime. She's been there, done that, securing over 400 media spots and counting. She's here to share how to craft those eye-catching pitches, boost your credibility in a snap, and find the right partners to get your story out there. And yes, we're talking big names like Fox and Business Insider. Are you ready to step into the spotlight you deserve? Just hit play, and Shannon's here to show you the ropes on how to get noticed and becoming the authority figure in your niche. And stay tuned, because she's got a free gift that I think you're going to like. This episode of the Lead Machine Growth Show is brought to you by Lead Machine, the step-by-step, tech-easy system for getting leads online. Are you struggling to get leads from your lead magnet? Are you tired of seeing low conversion rates and losing potential customers? It's time to revive your lead magnet and start attracting more leads. Download our free report, 10 Deadly Lead Magnet Mistakes That Are Costing You Leads and learn how to create a high converting lead magnet that engages your audience and drives conversions. Don't let common mistakes hold you back any longer. Revive your lead magnet today and download your free report at www.getleadmachine.com forward slash deadly. Welcome to the Lead Machine Growth Show, where you will discover how to tackle your tech, master your message, and design your dream. Paul Guyen, the mastermind behind the lead machine, introduces you to trailblazers who inspire you to implement life-changing solutions and systems you can model to nurture your leads and get your offers seen by your ideal clients who will invest in themselves and you. Be sure you visit our website at www.leadmachinegrowthshow.com. While you're there, subscribe to us via your favorite network. Now, tune in and get ready to transform your vision into reality. And welcome back. I'm your host, Paul Guyon, Lead Machine Coach and founder of the Lead Machine Mastermind Group Coaching Program. And whether you're just starting out or scaling up, we're here to turn your business dreams into reality. So today we've got Shannon Procise, the mastermind behind the Business Acceleration Network, ready to share her billion-dollar insights on making connections that count. Shannon, welcome to the show. I'm so glad that you're here. You know what? We've been we've known each other for what maybe 10, 12 years. We we haven't been we finally caught up again maybe a few months ago. And I knew you when we hired you for to promote one of our events. It was the the Think and Grow Rich. No, it was the Ultimate Mastermind Summit in Chicago. I remember meeting you for the first time and you had your little toddler with you. How old is he now? 10, 10 years old. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that was what, maybe seven years ago. Yeah, actually, I think it was probably like nine years. He was still in the little, little chair. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. 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 And, and you did some PR for us and you helped us with the event and I knew you as the media magic uh, guru. And I have your book somewhere in these scads of books that I have on the topic. So, um, Back in those days, and even sooner, you know, further back, I had been exposed to PR and, you know, the press releases and the, you know, back in the day when they had these, these free places where you could put, put in your, in your press release and, and, um, and you sit and wait and see if it's something's going to happen. And sometimes it did, sometimes it didn't, especially if you, if you had something noteworthy and, and like those events, they were, they were interesting to people who are interested in Napoleon Hill, Napoleon Hill and his mastermind. Uh, but, you know, to me, it was like, it just didn't seem to be catch. And I know that you really knew what to do and help to make it stand out. I didn't really have the time to learn, learn, it, learn it like, like, you know, but things have changed an awful lot in the last few years, especially I think in the last couple of years with how we've gone remote and people are yearning for connection. And I know that you're promoting 
the community now it's it's the the, the socialization the personal connections uh, so how did you how i know you're still doing pr but how did you come to to realize that and start to work in that area and develop that that's a that's a really good question because you guys actually did it so well at the event and i loved getting to know you, Paul, and how you helped. I mean, you are a systems and strategy and automation genius when it comes to what's <laughs> happening. And, and you guys actually did it really well at that event uh, too with the PR is you guys did a couple of things that I, I always encourage people. One is what I call cause marketing. You guys yeah. had an incredible charity that you gave back to. You, you made that a big part of the event where yeah. you had a fundraiser and you had a fun auction and there was a lot that you did and the yeah. and the media and people love to know that they're that what businesses are doing are more than just kind of bottom line it's like you're making a difference so that's one thing that that got excited about and really looking at you know how we're pivoting now and then the second thing that you guys did so well is the partnerships and the collaborations. Yeah. I found that that when I was able to get involved, you had already fostered some joint venture partners, some strategic mm -hmm. partners, people that were, you know, that really got behind your mission and vision and were on board with easily sharing what you had to offer. One being because they're involved, but two yeah. because they felt like, hey, we're a part of a partnership and we get to work together to make it make an impact and make a difference. Yeah, and we had Bernie Dorman there. He, <laughs> he showed up, and we had Cal's Angels and the guy, the hockey guy. I forget what his name was. Uh, but yeah, th that was exciting, and it made it a lot of fun. I think the part the part that I always like the most is the um, the mastermind. Mm -hmm. You know, when when we get together and we break up into small groups and we talk about. Uh, you know, what's, what's your biggest challenge? What's your biggest opportunity? What could be setting you back? You know, have you thought of this? And you know, when, when people say, I don't know if this would work, but have you thought of this in the mastermind group? If you hear that, you should lean in and listen and take notes because that person who probably is, who could be a banker or a baker and you're an entrepreneur, they might know something and see something from the outside that you'd never thought of. So That's that, why what you do is so important. It's like if people are listening and you're not a part of a mastermind, they should really consider your mastermind because it is. I, I have to say, sitting in those circles, it's like I've I've they show your blind spots and and I've gotten ideas that have made me tens of thousands of dollars yeah. just by having those strategic conversations. Yeah, and so that's really what we're talking about here. We're talking about partnerships and collaborations. So can you, from your experience lately, I know you've, you have a circle, you've got some, you've got this business acceleration network that I've been a part of recently, which I really enjoyed. I've already met a, a JV partner uh, or possibly two. And so how did you, can you share some examples about how that's working and how that's changed lead generation for you? Yeah. So I, I've taken it, we've taken it a little bit further. So we've all heard of affiliate marketing, right? Yeah. And so people will join platforms and create affiliate marketing, which is, I think, essential. And I know that's, I believe that's one of the things that you also help people with. Correct, Paul? Is that whole affiliate I, piece? Yeah, I can. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes. Or, or, or have that. But we really focus on, on the power partner. And that tends to be um, a little bit a deeper relationship where we yeah. get together, you know, at least once once a quarter ideally every month and we do a check in on what are you working on what are, you know and it and it becomes kind of that mini mastermind on how we help each other and we understand that that the relationship is beyond the bottom line my power partners i'm not keeping track of oh well i sent them five thousand dollars in business and they only sent me one because i know that when we strategically get together and have conversations i've gotten ideas where i'm like Oh my gosh, I didn't even see that, <laughs> right? So we yeah. we really look at look at that and what I found is in that in that place of lead gen, I go and find power partners that have a have an influence for my ideal clients and I end up creating a a relationship where either they can white label, meaning they take my product and put their branding and make it look like their own, um mm -hmm. or they just share it 
And the people that they send to me, by the time we get on the phone, it's a real easy yes. And over the last year or so, Paul, you know, we really have focused, at least in our community, of how how to go out and get those those power partners. Because if you have 20 people where they're referring you business and then you run your business like normal, right? It's like, it's such a, a beautiful way to market events, to share new new ideas and projects. And then also they look good because they know that when they do a referral, that it's somebody that, that they know, like, and trust is going to take good care of them. Right. And so the, the relationship is at the center of this. Mm-hmm. And this is, this is why I'm excited about it. Uh, because I've been involved with JV partners and Michael Whitehouse comes to mind. I don't know if you know Michael, but you yes. should, you yeah. should know him if you don't, uh, cause he's an amazing teacher of networking and strategic partners. And he puts on amazing events, which you should come, you should come and join him on, on one of those events. But it's exciting when, okay, affiliate marketing, you don't really get to know the people. You don't really get to know the the product owner. Uh, there's really no, there can be collaboration if you're a high performer. You know, you have to jump over these these ladders with, with a strategic uh, partnership and a network of people who can like get on a Zoom call and meet once a month and get to know each other. You know, I can meet with a, with a billionaire in that group and I'm not a billionaire, but I know stuff that they could use and they know stuff that I could use. And it's more, it's a, that collaboration is, is I think where that, um, that's better than PR. That's better than affiliate marketing. It's really a, a great way to do it. And then, right, you have access. You can get access to their audiences, and they can have access to yours. And it's a value exchange. So how did you stumble upon that? Was it by accident or by by genius? <laughs> no. So a number of years ago, I started an, another company, and it was fo- uh, supporting holistic health individuals. And the, so the first event... I brought in a lot of our community. It was a pr- fairly large event, and I had um, five hypnotherapists there. And I, you know, I've always had this heart and spirit of collaboration, but I didn't really know until we got into this group where you could just see kind of the one up. Well, I did this, and I did this, and by the time it got to around the circle to like the fifth person, it the room felt icky, right? It was yeah. just like, oh, this is not what we want, and so. I ended up connecting with them one-on-one and invited them all to meet with me all together. And I, I started talking to them about what happens when we have a shared vision and we work together. And I started saying, what are you really good at and what do you love to do? And then what what don't you like to do? And it was so fascinating. In less than 30 days, Paul, these five hypnotherapists ended up really started cross-referring they started their own association in our area and started collaboratively marketing together. And they became so impactful for the movement of hypnotherapy coming together than they did apart. So it was that whole experience of like, Ooh, this feels icky. Like what's going on here, (laughs) you know, to really um, helping facilitate the, the power of, of, of conversation and, and how do we really do what we love right? And make money referring out what we don't love. Yeah. And I call that the sweet spot. I mean, there's, there's a lot of things that you can do and people come to you and they want you to do this thing that they think you can do, but you don't know how to do. Those are things that you don't really want to do. Uh, Like for me, I can do a lot of things. People come to me all the time and said, Hey, I'm having problem with my home network. I'm trying to get HBO and this on my, on my smart TV. And that's not the kind of technology I help people with. I help people how to use technology to make money and, and be more efficient, not to hook up your, your see the Super Bowl on your, on your, on your TV from your phone with your Wi-Fi. You know, I don't know. I don't do those things, but I don't want to work in that, in that space or, or, or putting, upgrading the computer with Ram. You know, that's, that's not, I know how to do that, but I don't do that. I don't do that day in and day out. So brands how can in your in your intake form you mentioned brands and how it's a game changer for them to have 
these collaborations and these networks. How can a small guy, a one a solo entrepreneur, or who's who's becoming a brand, how can they tap into this power? So I think it really starts, there's two two pieces that I look at. And a lot of times we think of brand as our image and our logo, which is, which is important. Yeah. I think uh, you can make money without either of those. And let me tell you how, yeah. and that's by developing a pitch that is magnetic. That's by developing a message. It's really those messages and the words that we use that they either are a magnet, they're neutral or they're repulsive. And so when we're able to craft a message that, if anything, at least gets people to know, hey, I want to know more about what you're up to or what you're doing, that is what, to me, that's like essential with a brand is developing your, your elevator pitch, to call it. And then the second piece is what I call the expert power bio. It's like people want to know who are you and why should I listen? You know, Paul, when people know that you you were the behind the scenes of this huge ultimate ultimate mastermind summit with the Napoleon Hill Foundation and all that you've done to handle those logistics. I mean, there were exhibitors, there were sponsors, there were I mean, it was like for me to come there and help facilitate, you know, on the ground logistics that day and to work with you before we got there. It's like Wow. But, but in an expert power bio, a lot of times people don't, we have a hard time bragging about ourselves, right? Yeah. Or we've been told don't brag, don't boast. Or we, we forget some of those hidden gems that have led us where we are today. I, I, I often say to people, you know, everything you've done today has led you to this point. You may not just know how to communicate in a way that it makes, it makes an impact now. And if I could share one one story about that. Yeah, absolutely. I'd like to hear more yeah. about that. You know, I had a I had a woman whose daughter almost died from pledge. She she started getting sick. They couldn't figure out what was going on. I mean, really, really, really bad. And then she started learning that the you know that wood spray that we spray on our furniture oh, yeah. was really super toxic. And she ended up studying all of these products that were there, you know, out on the market and what's really safe and what's not safe. And, and in this journey, when we worked on her expert power bio, she had 35 years in like top international sales in the company. She goes, I don't want to mention anything about sales because people are going to think, you know, use car salesmen, uh. all this stuff. And I was like, no, this is essential. What this has allowed you to do is you can, you can cut through the hype and really get down to the bottom line of what is hype and what is real. And that's what makes you the perfect person for this particular, you know, company and project. So, um, you know, here's somebody where she's like, oh, that, that was an old me. This yeah. is a new me. We, we really, all of us have done some amazing things. Even when I work with 20 year olds, I've worked with 20 year olds because I love it. And we, we kind of put together a strategy of how to help them stand out and how to take everybody's experience and make that so that when people read about you or hear about you that they can go oh this is somebody i want to pay attention to they have experience in this wow i love that do you have any more examples i'd love to hear some <laughs> so more. many examples oh my gosh <laughs> well i it's it's so funny because you know i i i I have this 13 step expert power bio system and it has questions and so like one time i remember working with somebody and I, I said to her, I know, you know, she's, she's a incredible graphic design artist. She was getting ready to double her wages and we were reading her bio and it just wasn't magnetic. And I go, haven't you had like really big clients before? And she goes, Oh yeah, I had, you know, bank of America and Delta. And I'm like, this is not in your bio. <laughs> right. <laughs> We had another person who had been in Wall Street Journal and because his new business was relationship coaching and Wall Street Journal was a financial advisor, he yeah. didn't think that he could put that in there. And I'm like, have you been in Wall Street Journal? He goes, yeah. And I go, well, then you could put you <laughs> could put that you've been in Wall Street Journal. So a lot of times I know, I know those are more of a credibility piece, but it's, it's definitely uh, something that's important. I had one woman who was a professional arm wrestler who now owns a health food store. 
And <laughs> this is why I love this process because we made it really fun. Like we were able to add a, a human interest piece that when people read her bio, it's just like, oh my gosh, this is really, really great to connect people with who we are as a person and also the successes we have. And, and the most importantly is how we can help them with our experience. Wow. And you know, I, I learned, uh, I heard a story from Alina Vincent and she's a social media guru, guru. And she, she quit her job as a teacher and she went and started a photography business. And, and then someone said, well, you know, you're, you're advising people on how to show up on camera and, and getting, doing headshots. Why don't you coach people? Cause she was coaching people. And so she forgot all the things that she had learned and didn't bring it forward. And so it, you're right. It's, it's everything that makes us who we are today is what we bring to the table. Like, you know, when you, when you mentioned the ultimate mastermind summit, I haven't thought about that in years. And we've done a number of those, uh, you know, the, the Think and Grow It Summit in 2013. You know, you don't just don't think about those. You take those for granted. And the things that, and I think for our listeners, the things that you know and that you can do have value to someone. You may not be an, an expert in this new season of life that you might be in or that you might be pursuing, but you still have something that someone wants. You've got expertise and experiences and and uh, opinions and and stories that people want to hear. So how can you now, now that you you've you've got this, foundation of this brand and you you're you're trying to get more people into your community how does pr play into that well i love pr because it is how we can reach the masses yeah and it, what i found is that when we can craft a story and i usually focus on three primary things either human interest, like Aaron Brockovich, Seabiscuit, you know, we love hearing where maybe there's adversity and how we overcome it. Yeah. The other piece is education. You know, is there an educational piece, like three steps to generate leads, you know, today right. or something like yeah. that. And then the other one is community, community interest. So community interest could be events. It could be some of the cause marketing that we talked about. And then we have, you know, we have news, right? We've got news, but I really am an advocate of how are we spreading good news? Yeah. So with those, when you create a story, the, the whole idea is to be able to get it, get it picked up. So this is where we really want to look at, you know, what's that tagline heading? And there's a lot more noise, Paul, than 2013 right now. So yeah. if you can pick up on something that's going on right now, then you, you can really write a, a great great wave. And so it's good to find out what, what's in the news now. What are people talking about? And if you can tie it to that. But what I love about the media is that when you get picked up, it's like you can get in front of millions of eyeballs, which yeah. can really also create the spiral of, of other people picking up the media and the, and the story too, and, and putting their own spin on it or doing an interview or getting booked for an event or a podcast there's a lot that the media can do for a, a company and a and an individual brand yeah and so you got this pr now where do you take them to where do you bring them to how do you get how do you build this community how, how does that happen because it's like it's like an event it's like you know a facebook group or some other collaborative space where people can can meet and hook up uh where do you take them to What's, what's your favorite thing to do? So when you, let me just re, let me get clarity on the question. So you're saying once we have the PR, how do we get in the media? Is that? No, is no. That... How do we, so we're trying, we're, meet, we're, we're reaching out to people who would be interested in you and what you have to offer by the story that you've spread. Okay. And so next you want to convert those people into yeah. your community. So how do you bring them in? Perfect. So for, for me, and what I usually suggest is we try to come up with a clear call to action. And so mm -hmm. for us, we tend to allow people to visit for free, come in and get a taste, get a feel, whether it be an event, 
or a you know a, ma a mastermind but if we have a some sort of opt-in that you can send people to that's a great way for the the media to convert into somebody that you can start building a relationship or that we start building that that relationship with is some sort of opt-in or free thing okay and so you've got people in your community now you got them coming in so what's what's your 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 process to keeping them in keeping them engaged and and turning them into that power partner yeah, how does so that happen what, is that kind of organic or or how does no, that so work? what we do is we have again those strategic conversations so in our community we have went out and got our own we kind of figured that facebook is a little noisy right there's a lot going yeah. on and you get there and you're like oh well, there's aunt mary and and this is what's going on and so in our community we we invite people into our own space our own hub and we have different threads like we have an ask and assist we have a celebration where people are celebrating what's going on we have a place mm -hmm. where they're giving feedback we have a, a place just for AI and we're asking questions and sharing AI. And so we've taken really important conversations in business right now. And we have allowed the space in the container for people to be able to get that instant feedback, not only from, you know, uh, experts like yourself, Paul, in the community, but also other individuals in the community. Because even if somebody, like we were just talking about the bio, even if they may not be an expert in something new, it, a lot of people have experience that they can contribute to help it go. So grow. So our engagement is, is really honed into different pieces, but everybody gets to see what's, what's going on. And then we, much like you, we do events where we bring in people to help them grow their business through our high performance networking. Okay. And so how does that, how do you, run that? Do you have people, have volunteers or do you have paid employees, VAs? How does that, because to have a community, you've got to be involved in it every single day. You've got to monitor it. You've got to nurture it. You've got to, you've got to monitor the rules. People are breaking rules. You know, you got to throw them out. Sometimes you got to fire them. How do you keep, <laughs> and I know that happens. So how do you keep that rolling and still do your coaching and your PR and, and everything else. Yeah. So I'm going to let you behind the curtain. Well, some is I do have VAs that help. I do have to get in there myself and share and, and just constantly be thinking instead of, you know, well, let me post this on Facebook and LinkedIn. It's like, let me post this to my family, right? It's kind of like, if I've got news, let me get it to my family. But I also have aligned with strategic partners where I will comp their partnership in lieu of them showing up the way I do like, Hey, this, you're an owner in this, what can you contribute? And can you at least check in nurture and really love on people? So those are the ways that we, we really foster our, our relationship and people that are involved and use it. They just get excited because they're like, man, I can share my website <laughs> and somebody yeah. will give me feedback. So I believe that some of it happens organically because they're, they're, as you know, in a mastermind, when you lead your masterminds, when people come with a challenge, we all learn from people solving that challenge or contributing to that challenge. So yeah. that's been a, a great thing organically to to help the community thrive is that is that ask and assist piece. Yeah. And so could you share maybe a success story or another success story of how people have gone from the traditional PR and they've realized that, hey, things are changing and now uh, I need to have this network, but I, I really don't know how to start it, but I'm going to go in and do it anyway. So do you have some success stories you'd like to, to Absolutely. share Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, so I have a um, a client who they started out, you know, kind of a lone ranger, doing it on the, doing it on their own, having a team, but also feeling like they constantly had to be out fishing. So it was like, you know, we, we all want to continue to be marketing, but looking at, at how, you know, again, it's constant investments. <laughs> let yeah. me buy new PR, let me buy new leads. Let me do these, you know, these particular marketing tasks. And so when they joined our community, I know that instantly they were welcomed with open arms. They just started meeting with our members one-on-one -on -one and instantly started getting clients with what we had right there. Yeah, I know that they, yeah. they have gotten almost from everybody I've talked to, they probably 
met with at least 80% of our clients and probably closed 60 to 70% of that as active business. And we, and they're all, it's like this win, 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 plus they're sending them leads. So he went from, you know, cold marketing and cold, you know, putting out cash and sometimes not getting the return to showing up in a community where, where we foster collaboration, we foster partnerships to just getting on the phone and actually getting business and deals instantly. Wow. I should come to your, your meetings more often. You <laughs> yeah, that's kind of the, we have the public one, the, the high performance networking, which is so much fun. I know you weren't there last month, but we bought in a one of a kind networking algorithm. And what is so great is that you will, um, depending on the, on the size and that of new people that come in, the idea is that you meet with new people each time. Mm -hmm. And in the app, it keeps track of who you meet with and you can continue to foster that relationship with them in the app. So as you're going into different breakout rooms, you'll know that you're going to meet somebody new in that breakout room. And then all of our members, if you're just a guest, you can, you'll have your connections right there in the app, which is great. Like you can go, huh. oh, I met with Paul, I met with Shannon, but all of our members, they actually, when they attend, they get a, the full list of everybody that's there in the app. And it's really so that they can start following up on those connections right away. And you don't have to be worrying and, you know, in Zoom and writing stuff down. It's like, yeah, now taking screenshots. Yeah. And then you can see, hey, I met him here. And, and this app is so powerful because it, it keeps track of who you met with. So even if you came to five events as we grow, its goal is to make sure you meet new people every single time. Right. And I know I was in a couple of those meetings and it just happens in the middle of the day when I'm I'm not always available, oh, I know. but I'll try to make this next one. Uh, what I really liked about the meeting though, that I did go to, uh, and I met Fran, who who I just love working with her and, you know, we're, we're working on our partnership and collaborating. But what I liked about it, the breakout rooms you mentioned was that I got to got to know a little bit, and then we went and came back out, and we, we were in a group again, and then we we went we went back in and got a little deeper, and that was really valuable. And you and you don't always get that opportunity to do that in a lot of like a joint venture or whatever you know networking events that that are built for that. Um, like I mentioned, Michael Whitehouse, he has some events like that. And he does have multiple breakout rooms. And if it's a small enough group, you get to meet and kind of get to know people. And that's where I think the the uh, the real opportunity is, is when you when you can start and say, oh, OK, I, I get this guy. And, you know, I had no idea. And, if, you know, the first maybe the first impression was. No, I, I don't get what he does. But but then you you can go deeper, and I think that's important to have that. Like you mentioned, a container, a space to hold for people to um, to to have that have that development of relationships. So, what else have we not talked about that you really want to talk about that you want to share with us? Because uh, we've kind of gone gone going a little bit off track here, but that's why I wanted to have a discussion and not just give you a, a give you a question and then you answer it. <laughs> yeah, well, I love it. Well, for me, I just want to I just want to remind the the listeners that there is thousands of dollars of publicity with their name on it right now. It's just waiting to to know what you're up to and it's, you know, the time it takes to to write a story or even hire somebody to to, you know, write something for you and get it out to the media can be a well worthwhile effort to generate more leads and and more more clients and everybody i i have not met anybody that i couldn't come up with 40 different stories a lot of people are like well what what will we say what's the news and there's so much news in being in business it's just you know i can find those stories, right? Like Paul, you could write a ton on lead generation. You could write on online. You could write yeah. on making money while you're sleeping. You, could, <laughs> you know, sure. doubling your 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 time off. I mean, there's a lot that I that I on the education piece, yeah. and and the human interest piece. I haven't gotten to know you at that depth, but I know everybody has some sort of challenge they've had to overcome, right? Oh, yeah. Just yeah, everybody does. So just want to encourage people to start creating their their media list the easiest media to get is the media 
around you. And so as you're out and about, I mean, I just have an ex well, I haven't moved it from an Excel sheet, but you can just start with an Excel sheet of of what what's the what's the type of media? Is it TV? Is it radio? Is it is it print? What's the name of it? How frequently do they come out? Dailies, like daily newspapers or weekly newspapers, more so daily, they're constantly looking for new stories. And they love local human interest stories. When you send in a, at least in our area, in many local local communities, if you put in local author becomes bestseller, excuse me, they love that. They love telling local good news, right? So, so doing that is yeah. important. Um, and start identifying how do they want to submit a press release. And that becomes as much as like our database and our contact list that we, we may do business with or, or our leads, a media list is just as, if not even more valuable than that. And so we've been p getting people in Business Insider, USA Today, Fox, mm. ABC, NBC, and, and to, to get a business or a story in front of those eyeballs can really make a huge impact to generating more business. So that's still working. It is still working. <laughs> yes. That's and that's amazing, but it has changed. Of course, it's changed. But it, it, do you, do you think that the access is easier or harder than it was? Well, what I've found is I focus on. I, in the past, I focused on a lot of the free publicity, which is always a little bit harder, yeah. right? You're pitching. You have to have thick skin because you're going to get no a lot. You're rewriting. I I still do both, but I actually found a somebody that I've partnered with and I do a syndication service. And so we have prepaid spots in business, business insider, Fox, ABC, NBC. And we've actually been able to guarantee minimum 400 pickups with a full report of all of the links and, and, and everything. And so it does cost money, but I figured, you know, for time versus money of calling and <laughs> constant things, yeah. so still work in both, but I, I love, um, this particular instrument for me, because it's just writing a press release and, and submitting it, they have to approve it, but yeah. everything we've done over the last two years since COVID is, has been approved. And if you could make that, like you said, those, the, the three pillars that you were talking about, the, the human interest in, in the community and the education, you know, something that, that piques interest that would pique an audience's interest is a great way to do it. Before we go on to, uh, we're getting to the top of the hour, I think. What about AI and how have you, uh, how have you harnessed that as a, as a, uh, a tool to help you optimize and speed up and, and become more creative with, with. PR? So I use AI every single day. And if people yeah. are not using AI every single day, they're missing the boat. You so I, <laughs> I use every I AI every day to find media sources in specific areas. I use AI to find networking groups and business groups that and communities to to connect with. I use AI to help create catchy news titles or mm -hmm. check my news titles. Uh, I also use it to be able to uh, review my press releases and make sure does it flow right? You know, like I've always had an editor and now I use that in Grammarly and it's like, you know, yeah. it's really, it's really uh, made a big, big difference. And I also use AI to, if people, because sometimes people get campaigns with me, so they'll get more than one press release. They'll want three campaigns. And so I find it's really nice at least in AI to say, this is the first one, this is the second one, you know, what's, how do we, how, what's the key points to bring in from these other releases? Now I can do that mentally, but AI, as you know, I mean, it just takes a, a, it's, it's super, super quick. Yeah. And I've used AI. I use AI to prepare for this today and I had it write, write the intro, which I'm going to save for later. Uh, and I'm going to compare against the transcript about what, what we talked about and how how accurate it was but i use it every day in the same in similar ways um i've used it to to explore okay what are some networking opportunities for or collaborative opportunities for one of my clients who's a massage therapist hi wendy and and she we we were talking about strategy she's re reopening her goddess uh, massage 
therapy business. I can't remember what it's called, but we looked in her area and we uncovered uh, a couple of dozen of adjacent kinds of business that serve the same audience that she's looking for. We got contact names and websites and locations and addresses. And we used, uh, I think we used Bard for that because back then we, it was connected to the, you know, real time to the internet. And so, yeah, we came up with a list of stuff and then she went and she contacted some of these people and, and made a phone call and she said, yeah, let's, and she's, she's got some, some strategic partners who are promoting her and they're cross promoting and, and doing things like that. So, yeah. Oh, I have one other thing that when you, whenever you pitch to like wall street journal or New York times, you have to do a cover letter. Uh, and so okay. that's been another thing that we've used it for because they have a specific format and how they want it to read. And some of these big names we've also, I've also used AI to help get into that format. I mean, obviously you have to add your personal touch and make sure that it's yeah. accurate. But, uh, but that's been a real blessing for some of the press release cover letters and and that. Yeah, and I've you can even teach AI to write like you. I've I've given it a bunch of my articles and I had it summarize and given it some some custom instructions on on how to write like me. And sometimes I have to tell it to tone it down because they think I'm funnier than I really am. <laughs> so, but it's really funny and it talks back to me and it's it's like. It's having an assistant and you're having assistant, an assistant who is helping you. And that's how I treat it. And I thank them for their help and, and iterate through, through uh, a lot of things that I do, you know, with, with podcasting, with newsletters and things like that. And so I hadn't thought about how, how useful that would be for, uh, for your position and for what you do. But yeah, that's that's amazing. Yes, I've used it for solving problems. I mean, just even HOA challenges or my son had somebody give him a bad insurance card. And I mean, I like I use it for everything multiple times a day. And it's been really um, just a I, like you said, a personal assist. I kind of kid around. It's like that other husband that's that's better at, at marketing <laughs> than me. So, yeah. yeah, I used it today to write an Excel formula. I wa wanted to look at a customer name and assign a salesperson ID to that based on where they put, where they landed in the alphabet. And it was so simple. I could have thought of my, of myself, but it probably took me longer to, to, to write the instruction, but it came back, boom, and it worked just right out of the box. And I've used that a, a lot with Excel functions and so on. So I'm a, I'm a geek. I use Excel all the time. But when you, when you get in the community, we have a whole thread on AI. We love, we're constantly putting in there, just sharing tips and tools and and it's it's really i mean there's so much you could spend eight hours a day just taking in the new ai tools that they have so yeah um, you have to i have to turn it off i have to unsubscribe to some newsletters because i got so many of them <laughs> so it's been delightful having you on today what are as we wrap up shannon with your final words before we go what are three things that our listeners can do today to put some of these ideas into action Mm. First off, write down your elevator pitch. That is getting it down on paper and actually reading it and practicing it and and getting with you know somebody that you can read it to and help hone it in is really powerful. I meet with a lot of people where they're still fumbling and bumbling or they're going to events and they're not getting the results that they want. And the minute we write it down, make a few tweaks, it's just that clarity leads to power and leads. So the first thing would be, you know, writing down your mm -hmm. elevator pitch. And you you may have, like, I have like four or five of them, depending on who you're talking to, but right. getting, yeah. writing it down. The second thing would be to explore the a press release, like getting, you know, it's again, and you can even use AI to help um, with that. I know that with our syndication, we can put in links. There's some other things that we can get away with a little more than normal media, but explore um, using the media to leverage what you're what you're doing and and make those contacts in your local area. Connect with your local media. You know, a lot of chamber of commerce. I know in our chamber of commerce, they'll actually give you a list of local media. So yeah. getting developing your media list is. A big thing. And the third thing is collaborate, collaborate, collaborate. Find those power partners, even if you just start with three that you meet with once a month and you, you know, create that 
advisory council or, or partners that you, you know, you love what they're doing, they love what you're doing, and you just have them on your team so that you can be on this journey together and, and yeah. have a greater impact. I love it. So, and I understand, yes, you, we talked earlier, you have a couple of resources for our listeners. So the first one is the Media Magic Book. So I think you can get it at www.mediamagicbook.com. So tell us about that. And I yes. think there's, some, there's a little nugget in there that I'm interested in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so this is really like a workbook. It becomes a a template. There's templates for expert power bio. There is samples of that. There's actually templates for the press release and all kinds of goodies in there to, to help you create taglines that sizzle and everything you need to know to create a press kit and start contacting the the media. And yeah. Um, yeah, and I have to say the one part that people love, we have a section with the Power Bio where we've written over a hundred of the most powerful words in the human language. And wow. I have people where I'll meet them and they're like, look, I have it tagged right here. This is my favorite part. So when you're, <laughs> you're marketing yourself and you're sharing, you have kind of this cool resource guide that, that gets people's attention. Yeah. And the other one was www.expertpowerbio.com. So tell us about that. Yeah, so that's a system I was talking about that I think is foundational. Yeah. It shares the the 13 questions and the process to be able to start developing your expert power bio. And so this again when you when you take I do this every year, I update mine. When you start right. compiling all that you've done in this beautiful way of looking at who you are, it's beyond a CV, beyond a resume, and conveying that in a way that that has people want to know you more. Right. Wow. So that's www.mediamagicbook.com to get the book and some free publicity and your put together your, your press kit. And then www.expertpowerbio.com, which is the 13-step question bio system to create that awesome bio that that shannon has been talking about well thank you so much i appreciate and you know we, we we tried a couple of times to get you on the show and i'm so glad that we finally finally were able to do that so thank you again uh, i really appreciate it and so remember faith and action go hand in hand so put the pedal to the metal and until next time on the lead machine growth show i'm paul guyan and shannon Procise. thank you so much for coming Thank you. Thank you for tuning into the Lead Machine Growth Show with Paul Guyon, where we show you how to tackle your tech, master your message, and design your dream so that you can transform your vision into reality. Remember to visit our website at www.leadmachinegrowthshow.com and enjoy even more great episodes like this one. Again, while you're here, subscribe to us via your favorite network. We look forward to seeing you next time on the Lead Machine Growth Show.